Hi there, Mark Ferrier here with another video, another gameplay video that can be quite long, I guess, but uh, yeah, the subject of this video is this beast of a machine. It's uh, the Atari 800XL and uh, it's the Atari 8-bit home computer system that was a contemporary of the Commodore 64, uh, the VIC-20, um, ZX Spectrum, MSX, uh, early 80s. Uh, predecessors of this uh, were released in the late 70s, the Atari 400, the Atari 800, uh, but both had limited uh, memory. Uh, this came with 64 kilobytes of RAM, um, at least my version. Uh, there was a 16 kilobytes version that was the 8, what is the 600 XL, and there's also XE models. Um, yeah, I'm not going to explain everything about these Atari 8 bit machines. Uh, if you uh, are interested in getting to know some more about Atari machines, I'll put a link down below uh, to some websites that provide uh, good uh, reading information, reading materials on uh, these old machines. Um, back in the day, I was actually. Uh, uh, I set my eyes on a VIC-20. Uh, I wanted to have that machine um, for programming purposes and stuff and because it was uh, financially reach, in reach of me. I mean, I was, I was uh, doing all sorts of uh, jobs, odds and ends, I was saving up money. So I was saving up for a VIC-20 until I saw a picture of this. And at first it was the 600XL, later it was the 800XL. And I just loved the look of the machine. Um, it looked a lot classier than uh, the uh, the old plastic uh, Commodore 64 and VIC-20 uh, casing. Uh, yeah, especially this metal strip. Yeah, the 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 fact that these buttons aren't aligned properly um, kind of uh, takes away from the classy look. Um, but um, yeah, uh, it happened back in the day even. I still think it's a very uh, nice, uh, nice look. Uh, the keys, the keyboard is uh, not the best, but it's it's a very nice keyboard uh, to to type on program listings and stuff. Um, aluminum, uh, al aluminium uh, cartridge doors, and some sort of smoke glass um, uh, bit where with a red light and uh, yeah, it really. Uh, is a very classy looking machine, I think. Uh, this is a bit yellow now. Uh, it's supposed to be really a bit off-white, I guess, but uh, yeah, all these machines, they end up yellowing. Uh, two joystick ports, similar to the uh, Commodore 64. The power socket is over here with a power switch, uh, TV out, RF out, uh, video, uh, RGB video, uh, composite video, and uh, the serial port. There's a parallel port, parallel bus behind here, but the serial port is actually where we hooked up disk drives. The and what is it? The 1540 or the 10? No, the 1050 disk drive. That was it. So uh, yeah, uh, Alan Elder was actually uh, the guy who uh, promoted uh, the Atari machines, whereas uh, William Shatner was promoting the VIC-20 machine. So yeah different guys uh, <laughs> and different crowds I guess uh, still I didn't end up getting this actually back in the day my parents actually got a Commodore 64 so I became a Commodore 64 kid but this is a machine that I always dreamed about and uh, yeah I thought it would be nice to hook this machine up and play all the games that I have for it at least uh, these left cartridges um, yeah very nice looking cartridges with uh, metal uh, backside they're, they're all called left cartridges because the old machines had two cartridge ports um, yeah great machine and uh, I'll show you a bit closer look yeah there's a ton of other videos uh, showing this machine so uh, let's go play some of the games okay space invaders yeah one of the most Notorious games uh, on the Atari, and it is licensed by Taito, uh, but it looks a bit different than the standard arcade 
uh, Space Invaders. I mean, it's a lot more colorful. And, uh, yeah, you have to use a different technique to play it. It actually looks quite similar to the last game I did on my, uh, on my Vic video, Vic 20 video. I mean, it's there. I mean, the, the, the alien spaceship that, uh, yeah, that I just happened to miss here. Uh, the aliens moving back and forth, uh, gathering up speed as they go along. Uh, yeah. The, the good thing about this game is that it's, it's it seems a bit easier, and uh, the strategy uh, that you, you have to use is actually to shoot, uh, to make the the block of aliens moving back and forth as narrow as possible so it takes more time for them to actually uh, hit uh, either side with uh, the edge of the block so if you manage to shoot uh, away a lot of the aliens on one side it takes a bit longer for the, uh, the rest of the aliens to reach uh, the edge of the screen um, at the same time, you actually have to make sure that uh, the, the amount of rows, the horizontal rows, actually diminishes. So you are able to get rid of the remaining aliens uh, quicker. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's an early game and it shows. But still, I mean, it's a nice game. The aliens are nice, uh, nicely animated. I don't really recognize any of them from the arcade game though. That's a final blast. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna play this until the uh, the first game over, like I did with the Vic 20 video. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go through all my left cartridges, <laughs> all the cartridges that I've left. Uh, let's try to get the alien ship. Whoa! No. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess there's too many aliens uh, in the way. Yeah, it's it's ooh, that was really getting low. And this is really getting fast. Yeah, timing your shots uh, is uh, quite essential. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I totally muck up on that. But it's a nice, nice, very addictive game. I mean, it's a very whoops. <laughs> Whoops! Yep! Yep! Oh, <laughs> I get destroyed in the process. Oh man. Alright! Uh, oh. Well, I guess it's game over. <laughs> okay, next game. What will it be? Well, you guys uh, know. What it's uh, what it is. A very well known game. And here I try to. Okay, so the first level is quite doable. Yes. I I, I always seem to panic a bit and uh, just you know blast uh, the entire sky, which works in the earlier levels, but uh, I. I should actually try this with a trackball because this game actually works best with a trackball I'm using a joystick right now. Um, I do have an Atari tra trackball. Uh, Thomas uh, 2130 actually showed, showed one a little while ago. Um, I do have one of these, but I'm not sure if, the, if, these, if, if they work. Gosh, that's... Yeah, the moment they, they are getting very low and they break up into separate individuals, individual rockets, that really is tough. <laughs> I'm not very good at this game, but I like it a lot. And you really get a sense of urgency when you play this game. You see the, the foes appearing you really have to time uh, and plan the positions of your rockets very carefully because you just can't go shooting all of them at the same time, which I am apparently doing right now. Uh, 
Whoops, I think that, yeah, that lost me a city. Let's see how far I can go. Yeah, more aliens, uh, more rockets on the screen, uh, more planes dropping bombs on you. And there's so much happening. And it's really a tough game. I mean, it really takes a lot of planning, which is very good. I mean, it's good for planning skills, you know? Uh, prioritizing which, uh, which, uh, which of the enemies uh, should you attack first because of their speed. And, yeah. Okay, I, I find it hard to talk and play this game at the same time, so if my commentary is kind of uh, lacking here, it's because I, I destroyed my own base. <laughs> okay. Oh, I seem to be able to play on. Okay, oh, I, don't know, I had a life left, I guess, so... Uh, yeah. Okay, get rid of that. Yes. I think they, they really did do a great job, um, because these, these, uh, missiles that come your way um, with the trails behind it I and mean, uh, I found those very intimidating <laughs> uh, scary you know? a very scary game and uh, I mean uh, the Cold War still was pretty much going on you know I mean Gorbachev was getting ready to do his uh, perestroika thing but uh, yeah, quite a scary game actually. Oh, that seems to be Let's get rid of that plane. Don't forget the. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, any any missile set uh, don't fly in the, dire in the direction of my cities. Well, screw them. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not going to defend those. <laughs> oh, the track. Oh. Okay, so I'm under major attack here. Oh, and there's... Oh, no. Okay. Oh! Yeah, I can't say that uh, live game commentary is easy. Next game. Okay. Switch it on. Defender! <laughs> yes, this is a very cool game. And a very cool port. And it really has very smooth scrolling. The sounds are all there. The aliens are all... Oh. And it's a very crowded over here. Let's get rid, of, get rid of some of the aliens. Yes, attack wave uh, completed. Yeah, the first attack waves are rather simple and uh, I always find it hard. I mean, you, you, you really need uh, the radar on top to see the location of the, uh, of the foes, but the enemies, the aliens, but for some reason... Whoop, I love these explosions, <laughs> even if they mean that you just lost a life, but, uh, whoops, yeah, attack, oh, I still completed it, oh, wow, so, yeah, I mean, uh, basically with these, car with these cartridges, uh, the Atari 800, 400, or 800, uh, basically turn into uh, an Atari 7800 uh, with better sound. <laughs> uh, the Atari 7800, uh, it did come out in, uh, well, it's maybe close, I mean, the 8-bit the, the, the Atari games probably are closely closer related 
to the Atari 5200 games than the Sony games. Um, yeah, it's a very convoluted history. <laughs> the 5200 never came out in Europe, uh, only in the United States, I believe. Uh, so there's no need to collect, go collect for a 5200 uh, because the 8-bit games are just as good and uh, the joystick is far more reliable. You can actually use standard 8-bit joysticks, whereas the 5200 had these convoluted analog sticks that tended to break down. Great looking machine, they were huge. I, I think it even had a storage compartment for your controllers or something. Yeah, and I just keep dying. I mean, I shouldn't talk and play games at the same time, but yeah, you know. Okay, Breakout. Um, right, oh, yeah, I need a paddle for that. I don't have that, so yeah, okay. Okay, so next game, Dig Dug. Uh, press... Start. Yeah. Okay, it's the colors are a bit dark and a bit brownish. Very different from the arcade and the Vic 20 vibrant Vic 20 colors. Almost like uh, Commodore colors, which also were a bit bland even. And yes. And now the final one. The first. Oh, it's gonna escape. No way. <laughs> Okay, that's not how to play Tech Dog. Um, yeah. You can actually see that Mr. Do and Dick Dog are quite related. <laughs> oh, just a one. Okay. Yeah, I'll beat him to it now. Okay, so final dragon. Oh. You have to avoid those dragons uh, as, yeah, you shouldn't stand next to them because they breathe fire and they can fry you. Okay, let's... Oh. <laughs> uh, that's, that's due to impatience. Okay. Oh, it's already on the move. Let's see if I can get a final dragon. Shoot him from underneath. Yes! <laughs> cool. Mm, very satisfying. Okay, so it's all there. The music, the, uh, the foes. The graphics are a single color, though. Um, which makes it look a bit bland compared to the other ports that are out there. But, uh, but still, it's a very enjoyable game. Yes. And now it's gonna escape. It's gonna escape? No way! <laughs> uh, I think it is, yes. Okay, excellent. Ah, look, this is more bright. Oops. Again, impatience. Impatience. I really like this game. But I'm not very good at this port, actually. It, it's... It feels different than uh, the one on the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. Oh man! <laughs> Game over. Okay. Donkey Kong, cool. Yes. Very dark colors for some reason. With the uh, Atari color palette. Why they do uh, did that, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The small screen uh, monkey on the other side of the screen configuration that you also find on the ColecoVision. Oops, and it's very tough. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you have to wait for that first uh, top to fall down, and then you have to climb up. Oh. Yeah, and then you <laughs> you don't have time to jump, jump twice, so um, I think I need to use the other ladder more to the left. 
wait for the barrel to fall down, jump it. Yep, you can see it, and use the left ladder up to jump. Jump again, jump! Oh, yeah, those two are too close together. Hmm. Oh, it's game over. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here we have Kicks. Very nice game where you have to fill up a certain portion, proportion, percentage of the screen. And, uh, yeah, this uh, has a threshold of 75%. Uh, you die when uh, the sticks, the wandering sticks, I'm not sure how to call them, uh, when they hit you or you, they hit your, your little line that you're drawing. And, uh, yeah, here you can actually see this slow fill rate of the machine. Kind of lets the game down a bit, but uh, yeah, you win by getting the percentage or by capturing uh, the sticks in uh, yeah within your little area that you draw, drew, draw. Look, now I get over 75%, and I uh, have some extra bonus. And yeah, what I basically always do is. Uh, Draw some sort of wall, dividing. Oh yeah, and just <laughs> or sometimes do this. Um, yeah, sometimes you can just go and fill up the half of the screen. But I just uh, end up drawing walls, and uh, of course you have to be careful. Ah, here I'm again. You have to be careful uh, not to run into that little critters that run the lines, because if they come into contact with you. Yeah, they zap you when you're dead. Not sure what they are. Don't have the uh, instructions to this game. I believe there's also uh, an arcade port, and uh, this game definitely is out for the other systems as well. I've played it on the NES, on the Commodore 64. Not seen it on the uh, on the Clicko Vision though. Okay, so let's. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but... Uh, oh, yes! So, catching one of these really gets you a bonus, you know, double scores and stuff. Yeah, whoops, yes, and now I get both, I guess. Yeah, cool. Okay. Oops, yeah. <laughs> Impatience yet again. Game over. Okay. Okay. So Jungle Hunt. Haven't been playing. Have, haven't played this game in ages. And this port is actually quite difficult. I always see that muck up on the uh, vine, you know, like this. And the other ports, if you are very high up, uh, it's it's very e fairly easy to jump from vine to vine. But yeah. I remember being very amazed. Oh, <laughs> I kind of double double fired or something. Um, I remember back in the day being quite amazed by the graphics. Uh, you know, the the grass be, be below and uh, the canopy above. Yeah. And this was one of the first games that really has uh, multiple games in it, you know, multiple screens, and that was a big thing, you know, uh, uh, an evolution of the single screen, uh, back, black background, uh, avatars on the screen running around thing, uh, to scrolling screens and even multiple scenes within a game, and I managed to score a game over. <laughs> Next game, Asteroids, yes. 
an epic game, quite a good version. Um, it's really fast, and uh, the inertia of the ship is is a bit. I mean, the ship has is a bit laggy, I think, in this version. Uh, but yeah, I mean, who doesn't know this game? <laughs> I know how to explode. Uh, right. Yeah, it's not. I'm, I'm not the best at this game, but I totally enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, the premise of the game is just to survive, destroy the asteroids, and uh, kill the UFOs that every once in a while come your way. Um, destroy the UFOs. Uh, destroy the asteroids. They break up in little bits of asteroid, and um, yeah, just basically survive. So shoot the little asteroids, shoot the debris, move out of the way. Uh, whoops. Don't drift into an asteroid. Yeah, here, here the latency of the ship really comes into play because in another version of it I would have been able to uh, do some uh, thrusters on and would have been out of the, of the way. But uh, yeah, this game has kind of a delay in the ship, which is fine. I mean, it takes getting used to. I've been playing a certain other version of this game quite a bit recently by Mr. Electric Adventures. Uh, soon coming up, a very cool version of it. Uh, yeah, um... I'll destroy the last one. And there's this alien UFO, come on! Yes. Hmm, I'm doing quite well here. For uh, someone uh, who isn't the best at this. Yeah, during the later levels, the. the oops. Yes. <laughs> Not sure how I managed to survive that. I didn't dare uh, move due to the inertia of the ship, but. Yeah. Um, oops. And the. That was really pushing it. Um, due to the... Yeah, in later levels, um, uh, the uh, asteroids become more plentiful or they move around a lot faster. Your ship doesn't become much faster, I think. So, uh, yeah. Luckily, the UFO pilots don't and I die. Uh, luckily the UFO pilots don't know how to fly themselves. Um, at least they're not very good at it because they crash their UFO into the asteroids themselves. Uh, freeing you from having to kill them. And concentrate on blasting the hell out of those asteroids. Yes, UFO come. Well, <laughs> okay. Okay, Star Raiders, a game from 1979, and uh, it's a very nice game. At least it looks nice, but the gameplay itself is rather simplistic. You have a very nice, impressive looking star field that you fly through. You have uh, missiles that you fire up in the distance, and there's some enemies that you uh, that you see flying by. These these green balls. Um, you ha you get a uh, you get uh, information about the direction that they're coming from by the coordinates. Um, and here I destroy one, but it's it's too difficult actually. Uh, it's not horizontal and vertical uh, coordinates. And uh, yeah, uh, it's 3D coordinates, and it's it's, it's uh, yeah, it's a bit beyond me, I guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, and they crash into you, and the moment they crash into you, um, you're dead. And you get this message, and you get this award, and uh, yeah, that's the game. Um, yeah, perhaps I don't do it justice, but uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I think it's time to go to the next game. Okay, next game. 
Centipede, yes. A uh, very nice game and a very cool port, albeit very difficult. And uh, yeah, a game, again, a game that I should try to play with the, uh, the trackball that I have. And yeah, everybody knows this game and I, here I try to play it. Um, yeah, firing uh, from, yeah, I think, yeah, this, this game doesn't have auto-fire. Uh, most most centipede clones that I know have actually auto firing. Or yeah, it does. It does. It, it does have auto fire, but uh, it's very slow, and uh, it only fires rapidly if you are very close to the the, the, the item that you want to hit. <sighs> and I'm so distracted. I I'm not even playing this properly. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's it's difficult. I mean, moving around is tough, and uh, yeah, perhaps I should play it with a trackball. But uh, yeah, let's get that. Oh. Okay, it seems to be uh, game over. Although it's not printed on the screen, but I guess we have reached a game over. Yes, a game over. I think it's time to go to the next game. Okay, Grid Runner. Uh, yeah, Jeff Minter, a very small screen, and it's actually a lot, uh, it's not as playable as the uh, VIC-20 version actually, but it's, it's still, it. I mean, it's Great Runner, I can afford that, it's still a great game, uh, but the, uh, yeah, the VIC-20 version was more, I don't know, it really suited better. Uh, I guess what is distracting, very distracting, is actually the glowing scores. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, I mean, yeah, the, 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 the Atari was capable of producing a ton of colors, but I guess the, the whole flashing thing uh, really makes it very, uh, yeah, a bit too, a bit too much. Uh, the, the game graphics are a bit too small, the flashing is a bit too much, but still, I mean, who can, yeah, it's psychedelic, come on, uh, who am I to, you know, to uh, talk bad of a Jeff Minter game, it's actually virtually not possible, but uh, compare it to the other ports, uh, the V20 port is actually better, so, oh, and I fly into the lasers, yeah, th I want th to. I'm not sure. Uh, several people actually commented on uh, the fact that HES is actually the company that uh, uh, published uh, the Jeff Minter games in uh, the United States, uh, whereas Llamasoft uh, was his own company that uh, published the games in Europe. So that's why uh, there's no Llamasoft in these uh, Jeff Minter games. Very nice gameplay, I mean, uh, centipede with a twist, you know, centipede with something extra. Oops. Yeah, and if they fly into you, you're dead, so... Okay, let's see if I can... Yeah, I'm quite anal about uh, <laughs> stuff that sits on the screen, so I want to destroy that. Uh, almost at the cost of getting hit by lasers, you know, it's, it's not a neat freak, I'm not sure that could be it. And... Yeah, game over. <laughs> okay, time for the next game. And the wonderful game of Pac-Man! <laughs> 1982. Yeah, and this, this version of Pac-Man is actually very, very... Uh, identical to the Commodore 64 version. Uh, well, the hardware of both machines is very, very, very uh, similar. So I guess porting it to the Commodore 64 and the uh, Atari uh, basically, yeah, just 
they, they, they sort of use the great same graphics, uh, not the same sound. The sounds on the Commodore 64 version can be quite grainy, whereas the sounds on the on the Atari version are actually quite uh, well Pac-Man-ish. They're enjoyable. And uh, yeah, the thing about Pac-Man, I mean, Pac-Man is probably the game that I played the most ever. And uh, the thing about Pac-Man is that you just don't go blinding blindly after the ghosts when you've, once you've eaten that uh, power-up. Because if you do, uh, you, you probably end up in a situation where you were worse off than before. Worse off than before. Um, the thing is with Pac-Man to just uh, concentrate on emptying out those mazes and eating the ghosts when you have the opportunity. Um, yeah, it's 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 more of a game, it's it's more a game of opportunism, I guess, than of uh, uh, yeah, just going for the ghosts, hunting down the ghosts, getting every every uh, fruit that is out there. Uh, because if you do, at least if I do, I tend to die uh, quicker. So yeah, and it's it's a fun game because you really have to uh, focus your peripheral vision, or you really have to use your peripheral vision, uh, checking out the ghosts in the, in the periphery, and focusing on the, the the game close by your avatar, and see which routes you can take. Uh, yeah, if you do that, and if you switch around properly, you'll, you'll be able to play a mean game of Pac-Man. And of course, there's the, the bit about remembering, memorizing the ghost patterns, because, uh, yeah, each ghost has uh, its own uh, preferential uh, movements. Uh, some ghosts uh, are very keen to ignore you, even when you're very close by. Other ghosts that really go for you. In the, uh, in the arcade game, it was actually quite... Uh, yeah, the ghosts were quite easy to distinguish. Uh, they all had their different names, uh, Pinky, Inky, and what have you. And for some reason, despite uh, the... the <laughs> that was a narrow escape. Despite the huge color pal... Yeah, I'm just, you know, trying to show you guys how not to play Pac-Man, I guess. Um, despite the huge color palette of the Atari, they chose these colors, which are just totally off. I mean, yeah, the blue of the of the game screen, that's that's pretty much Pac-Man. Uh, those, those, the dots are supposed to be yellow, they're more like orange, but uh, yeah, that may be a PAL uh, issue, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, but the colors of the ghosts, I mean, they're just off. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I'm just emptying out uh, the top uh, part of the, the screen here. Uh, using the power palette just to empty out, get, get me some time to empty out the screen. Yeah, so... Basically, uh, what makes uh, the uh, Atari game look so nice is the fact that it has a higher resolution than the VIC-20 version, uh, than the VIC-20 machine. So, uh, and it's funny that most most other Pac-Man ports, uh, they, they seem to introduce a scrolling screen because for some reason the, the, the authors find it hard to include uh, the entire game screen. In uh, yeah, in just a home, home, you know, the, the, the resolution that the home computers, the home systems were, were using. Uh, for example, the Tengen version on the NES, uh, it uses uh, scrolling, and uh, also the Master System version. I mean, it has enhanced graphics, but it uses scrolling as well. There's a non-scrolling version uh, of Miss Pac-Man uh, by yeah, the original Pac-Man. That is Miss Pac-Man, of course. Uh, it's not scrolling. Um, the Pac-Man games themselves, they, they they were never scrolling, I guess. Or were they? Yeah, on the Game Boy. On the Game Boy, the Pac-Man game itself also was scrolling, I think. Yeah. I played this to death. Um, 
Yeah, probably a lot on my Game Boy, actually. Uh, I used to take that with me on night shifts. And, uh, yeah, I had a, I had a, whoops, <laughs> yeah, that was inevitable. I had a, I had a, a yellow Game Boy with grey buttons, which had the same color palette as these fancy Sony sports books back in the uh, 80s and 90s. So it looked kind of cool. And uh, there was this textbook, this, uh, this uh, yellow textbook that uh, the interns were supposed to carry around but I remember I memorized it and I carried I didn't carry around the yellow textbook but I carried around my yellow Game Boy <laughs> and whenever I had to wait for you know, uh, I was I, I flicked it on turned it on and was playing Pac-Man and uh, Mario Land and so yeah Pac-Man probably is the game I've played the most and as you can see I'm not too bad at it uh, but yeah talking and playing at the same time really <laughs> really is distracting and uh, I mean I, I tend to make mistakes that I uh, normally wouldn't make or uh, it's weird I mean uh, playing and playing and playing a video game and talking at the same time kind of gets you in the zone too. I mean, you, I mean with a game like Pac-Man you can really overthink, overthink uh, stuff, you know, you really... and it makes you slower if you think about things too much. Mm. It really has to be instinct and it has to be twitch, <laughs> twitch, twitch, memory twitch. And I don't think I'm doing a... Uh, uh, well, yeah, okay. No. Yeah, and now I have this thing about that pill that is left over there, and yeah, you need, you, you see me me freaking, I just homing on that left pill, and I just run into a ghost. Next game, Miss Pac-Man. Yes, the the uh, well the, the version of Pac-Man, uh, if you ask me. Quite a good version. Um, moves around the screen uh, a bit slow at first uh, but it's a very cool version uh, the Atari 5200 version is pretty much identical there's also a version on the Atari 7800 I actually have a very special uh, PAL release of, a, of an Atari an old, uh, uh, what is it, uh, of an old Pac-Man uh, compilation cart, homebrew cart Yeah, to me, Miss Pac-Man is more appealing than the original Pac-Man game. Probably because uh, the mazes are more... Pre yeah, they present you with uh, nicer opportunities. Uh, uh, there's multiple mazes, um, which is nice. Um, it, it, I mean, it really gets hard though. Uh, what, what lets... Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man down is the fact that the game basically becomes unplayable over time. I mean, uh, yeah, the ghosts are able to to uh, to move at a much faster rate than you as a Pac-Man dude or dudette are able to. So basically you just get overtaken, you know, all the time, so uh, losing life after life, so... Um, yeah, that, that kind of lets it down. And, uh, it's really weird. You have this, uh, you have these uh, games that are uh, hacked, and uh, you're actually able to uh, play Pac-Man at a higher speed. And I actually find playing Pac-Man at a higher speed easier. I guess because I can twitch and instantly responds to, uh, to it uh, quicker, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, some of that. Oh yeah, and here you can see the sprite flicker. A lot of these machines had that back in the day where 
uh, there's only a, a limited number of sprites. Uh, you could only uh, produce a, or display a limited number of sprites on a, on a horizontal line. Uh, and otherwise the system would flicker. Uh, yeah, most systems actually were able to produce more sprites on the screen than the Commodore 64, but the Commodore 64 never suffered from the horizontal sprite flickering. Uh, it actually never suffered from sprite flickering. Frickle, fl flickering. Uh, and yeah, this is the most tough game, the, 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 the most tough maze in, in, in the Miss Pac-Man. Uh, I think it has to do with the fact that there's just these lengthy stretches of maze that just have one exit and one entrance. And so the ghosts are able to overtake you or home in on you. There's whole sections that just rely on the single entrance almost. Yeah, I, I I tend to play and collect arcade ports for uh, these old computer systems because I really like these old arcade ports. I have uh, quite a few arcade ports for the NES, for the Commodore 64, the Vic, Vic 20, uh, the Atari. I mean, all the games that I show here, all my left cartridges pretty much are arcade uh, ports of arcade games. There are some that I still want to have though. Uh, I mean. Uh, I've been playing them on my side. Uh, it's a flashcard. It's a compact flashcard. Uh, but games like Gyrus, you know, I still want to have for the uh, as a cart. Uh, Galactians, Galaga, uh, those type of games. Frogger. There's there's quite a few games that I still don't own, and uh, I would like to get. But uh, yeah, uh, game fairs, uh, you know, game deals, whatever. eBay, uh, very cheap trying to get some loose cards. That's the way I will go with these. Um, luckily they are region free, so even American game cartridges, uh, 800XL, 800XE, whatever, what have you, the uh, Atari 8-bit games, they, they are region free, so I'm able to import them out of uh, you know, the NTC areas as well. So that's a, that's a good, good, good thing. And uh, yeah, I'm basically in the market for some of these Atari cards, but yeah, not that I'm actu ac actively looking for them. And I died again. <laughs> well, I have some lives left. I'm not sure if I'm able to make it to the next screen. The screen with the bouncing bananas that are about 5,000 5, points or something. I'm not sure. But they're, they get you a lot of points. And that, that screen is a bit easier. I'm not sure why, but it, it just feels easier to me. With this, whoops, with this, uh, with this screen I always uh, get anxious. <laughs> Perhaps that's, that's the reason. Yeah. Well, down to my last life. Um, will I be able to clear, clear it? Yeah, and that's just me going for those leftover pills. Okay, yeah, I'm all free. Okay, that's the chest. Yeah, oh, yeah, and intermissions, of course. That's cool as well. Uh, yeah, there's a whole story that is told. Uh, it also has a storch, a little baby Pac Man. And, uh, yeah, let's see if. I have enough muscles to show you the rest of the mazes. Uh, <laughs> okay, game over. Well, that's the end of my video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.